Hello. Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to make steam tea by blender fluid simulation. Let's get started the lecture. First of all, let's download the teacup model as blender file. I will share the download link in the description. Then, press shift A and add a cube object. Press C key and switch to wireframe mode. Press numpad 1 and switch to front view. Move the cube on the Z axis. This cube will be domain for the fluid simulation. Rename the cube as fluid domain. Let's add a UV sphere. Scale down the UV sphere. Move up the sphere so that it will be inside the domain. This sphere will be inflow object for the fluid simulation. Rename the sphere as fluid inflow object. Alright. It is time to add fluid physics. Select the cube, click on the physics properties tab, and add fluid physics. Switch the fluid type to domain. And switch the domain type to liquid. Set the resolution division value to 64. Scroll down to mesh section, and enable the mesh option. In the cache section, we won't change simulation start and end frames. The simulation will start at frame 1, end up at frame 250. Switch the cache type to modular, and turn on the resumable option. OK. That's it for domain settings. Now, select the sphere, add fluid physic. Switch the fluid type to flow, flow type to liquid, and flow behavior to inflow. So, the sphere will emit fluid till end frame of the simulation. But, I want the sphere emits fluid till frame 160. To do that, be sure that use flow option is enabled. At frame 1, click on the little dot next to this option. So, it will add a keyframe at frame 1. Then, jump to frame 160, and add in another keyframe. Go to the frame 161, disable the use flow option, and add a keyframe. Let's enable the initial velocity option. So, we can give initial velocity to fluid in a certain axis. Let's set the initial x value to negative 1.5. Now, select the T cup, and add fluid physics. Switch the fluid type to effector, and choose the effector type collision. So, the fluid particles will collide with the T cup. Also enable the as planar option. Alright. We are ready to bake for fluid data. Select the domain, and click on the bake data button. Baking process has done. Let's play the simulation. It works properly. It is time to bake fluid mesh. Scroll down to mesh section, and click on the bake mesh button. After baking process, play the simulation again. There we go. Let's switch to solid view. We can see the fluid mesh now. Right click and make shade smooth. Switch back to wireframe mode again. Now, it's time to add steam. To do that, we need to add gas domain. Let's add a new cube object. Switch to front view. Rename the cube as gas domain. Move up the domain on the z-axis little bit. Also, move the domain to right side slightly. Click on the fluid button and add fluid physics. Switch the fluid type to domain. The domain type will be gas. Set the resolution division value to 128. Enable the adaptive domain option. In the gas section, set the heat value to 1.5. In this case, 
the steam will rise faster little bit. Enable the dissolve option. So, the steam will disappear over time. Set the time value to 30. In this case, the steam will disappear slower. Go to cache section, switch the cache type to modular, and enable the resumable option. That's it for gas domain settings. Now, we need inflow object inside the domain. Firstly, go to frame 1. Let's add a cylinder. Rename the cylinder as gas inflow object. Hit the S key and scale down the cylinder a little bit. Scale down on the Z axis also. Move up the cylinder on the Z axis a little bit. Click on the fluid button and add fluid physics. Switch the fluid type to flow, and flow type will be smoke. Flow behavior will be inflow. We can control when the inflow object will emit steam. We want the inflow object to start emitting steam at frame 20. To do this, at frame 1, Disable the Use Flow option, and click on the little dot next to Use Flow option. In this case, it will add keyframe at frame 1. Then, jump to frame 20, and add a new keyframe. Go to frame 21, enable the Use Flow option, and add another keyframe. We want the flow object to rise up with liquid level together. Jump to frame 30, go over viewport, hit the I key and add location keyframe. Then, go to frame 160. Move up the cylinder on the Z-axis. Hit the I key, and add another location keyframe. Let's set the initial temperature to 1.2. In this case the steam will rise faster a little bit. Go to Flow Source section, and set the surface emission value to 0.5. In this case, steam emission will be closer to mesh surface. Let's enable the Texture option. We will use a texture to control steam emission strength. Click on the Texture Properties tab, add a new texture. Switch the texture type to Clouds. Go to Color section, and set the contrast value to 5. Let's go back to Physics tab, and select the texture we have just created. Go to Frame 1, and add keyframe for offset value. Go to the last frame, set the offset value to 1.5, and add another keyframe. Alright. Now, let's add Wind Force Field to drag the steam little bit. Press Shift A, Force Field and add wind force field. Rotate the wind field 90 degrees, and move up little bit. Set the wind strength to 0.05, and set the flow value to 0. We are ready to bake steam data. Select the gas domain and click on the Bake button. Baking process has done. Let's play the simulation. It looks cool. Alright. It is time to shading. Firstly, switch to Render Preview Mode. Go to Render Properties tab, and be sure that Cycles is Active Render Engine. I want to use HDRI image for lighting the scene. Go to World Properties tab, click on the Color node, and choose Environment Texture. Click on the Open button, and choose the HDRI image. I will share the download link in the description. Now, let's add glass shading for teacup. Select the teacup, and switch the Timeline Editor to Shader Editor. Click on the New button, and add new material for the cup. Rename the material as Glass. Select the principled shader, and delete. Press Shift A, and add a glass shader instead of it. 
Plug the glass shader to material output node. Set the IOR value to 1.333 for glass. There we go. Select the plate, and assign the same material. Let's add material for the T-fluid. Select the fluid mesh, click on the new button. Rename the material as T. Add a glass shader in the same way. Set the IOR value to 1.333. Select the color for the T. We can hide the fluid and gas inflow objects in the viewport and render results. We can also hide the wind force in the viewport. Now, it's time to shading for the steam. Select the gas domain, click on the new button. Rename the material as steam. Delete the principled shader, and add emission shader instead of it. Plug the emission shader to volume node of the material output. Let's add volume info node. Plug the density node to strength node. We can see the steam right now. Let's jump to frame 120 to see better the steam. But, still we need to adjust the steam. Let's add a math node. Switch to multiply function. Add a light path node. Plug the camera ray to value node. We can also control density of the steam. To do that, duplicate the math node, and drop it between emission shader and other math node. When we increase the value, we can have much more dense steam. Let's set the value to 4. We can also add a color ramp to determine where the density will be. If we drag the black color to right side, it's going to clamp down some of that steam. We can also add another color stop. Click on the plus icon and add new color stop. Set the color all the way up to white color. Select the last color stop, and set the color all the way down to black color. So, we can have more realistic steam. We can also set the emission color to gray color slightly. It looks better now. Alright. It's time to render now. Firstly, let's rotate the HDRI image so that we have proper perspective. Let's switch the shader mode to world. Select the environment texture and press Ctrl T. It will be added texture coordinates node and mapping node automatically. Let's set the Z rotation value to 195. It is nice perspective for rendering. Let's place a table under the teacup. I will share the download link in the description. Switch to solid view. Go to file menu. Import the file into with a pen method. If you want, you can watch the tutorial about how to import Blender files with a pen and link methods. Switch to front view and scale up the table enough. Move down the table under the teacup. Move the table on the y-axis little bit. Switch to render preview mode again. We need to add a camera to get render. Let's add a camera. Press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 to snap the camera to view. We can adjust the perspective so that we are happy with the result. It is time to get render. Firstly, we will get image render with cycles. It will give us more realistic result. But, we'll get simulation render with EV. 
because cycles really takes a lot of time. Click on the Render Properties tab, and set the maximum samples number to 128. Enable the Denoise option. Then, click on the Output Properties tab, and set the resolution to 1080 pixel. Go to Output section, and choose the folder you want to save. Set the file format to PNG. Go to Render Menu, and Render Image. The result looks very nice. Now, let's get Simulation Render. Go to Render Properties tab, and switch to Eevee Render Engine. As you can see, glass shading looks terrible with Eevee. We need to make some settings. If you want, you can watch the tutorial about how to make glass shading in Blender Cycles and Eevee. Enable the Screen Space Reflections, and enable the Refraction option. Then, select the tea cup and click on the Material Properties tab. Switch the Blend Mode to Alpha Hashed, and enable the Screen Space Refraction. Let's switch the Shader Editor to Object Mode. We need to add Transparent Shader for Transparent Glass. We need Mix Shader to mix Transparent and Glass Shaders. We need Fresnel node to determine how much will be transparent and glass the material. Plug the Fresnel node to factor node of the mix shader. Set the IOR value to 0 0.9. Let's add a math node. Switch to multiply function, and enable the clamp option. Set the value to 8. It looks better now. Select the T mesh, switch the blend mode to alpha hashed, and enable the screen space refraction. We can also change the color of the T. For the steam, click on the Render Properties tab. In the Volumetric section, set the tile size to 2 pixels. Scroll down to Color Management section, and switch to Very High Contrast. Also, Set the maximum sample number to 64 for faster render. Click on the Output Properties tab, scroll down to Output section, choose the folder you want to save your video. Set the file format to MPEG, and switch the container to MPEG4. We are ready for simulation render. Go to Render Menu, and Render Animation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.